Okay, you're given that you have a right triangle with a hypotenuse that has a length of three. And we want, there's infinitely many triangles that have that property. But we want to find the one that has the maximum area. Okay, so what we need is a function that calculates the area based on perhaps, well, these kind of got moved out of position. X here, if this is, if this leg is X, then this leg is the square root of 9 minus X squared by the Pythagorean theorem. So the area of that triangle for any given X is 1 half the base times the height. So there's our objective function. And if we take the derivative and find critical numbers, uh, using the product rule, we have the derivative of the first times the second plus the first function times the derivative of the second using the power rule followed by the chain rule. And if you simplify that, this term right here, you do see that we have one minus sign here. One of these twos cancels out. We get an x squared in the numerator and a 2 square root of 9 minus x squared in the denominator. Now we got to set this equal to 0, solve for x. Uh, picture it setting it equal to 0 and then transposing the term that has the minus in front of it to the right side. We get something like this. We could multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of those. And then cross multiply. And you get radical times radical gives you what's the radicand. 9 minus x squared equals x squared. x squared equals 9 halves. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 9 halves. But we're dealing with lengths of segments. So there's the side one of the legs that gives the maximum area. Well, we don't know for sure that that's the maximum area. Actually, we would have to apply the first derivative test or find the second derivative and, and uh, substitute this critical number to see if we get a, a negative value, which would give us a maximum area. Okay, so uh, we'll leave that to the viewer, but if we want to find the maximum area, find A of 3 radical 2 over 2. And it turns out, after all the simplification, it simplifies to 9 fourths. That's your maximum area. And in fact, if this is x, then the square root of 9 minus x squared, it turns out if this, I should say, if this is 3 radical 2 over 2, we get 3 radical 2 over 2 for this leg also. So it's a 45-45 right triangle. And another way to do the problem real quickly is if you want to say that this is theta and use the formula that when you know two sides and an included angle of a triangle, the area is 1 half the product of the two sides times the sine of the included angle. There's another formula. And it's true that the cosine of theta equals x over 3, so x equals 3 cosine theta. So that's what gets substituted right here. 3 cosine theta. And if you multiply 3 times 3 halves, you get 9 halves. Uh, but then you can rewrite that like this. And why do we do that? So that we can replace this with a double angle equivalent, sine of 2 theta. Oops. So there's, there's an area function in terms of theta. 9 fourths sine of 2 theta. So the derivative is 9 fourths cosine of 2 theta times 2. If we set that equal to 0, these numerical coefficients will just cancel out. So the cosine of 2 theta is 0, so 2 theta equals the angle that has a cosine of 0, which is pi over 2, or 90 degrees. So theta, if we divide both pi over 45, 
there we go, another right triangle. And if we want to find the area based on theta, there's the formula. 9 fourths sine of 2 times pi over 4, or 2 times 45. That's the sine of 90, which is 1. Same area. Okay. Once again, you could apply the second derivative test to prove that that's generating a maximum area. Okay, there you go. Hope that helped if you have any questions. Okay.